Okay, uh, good morning. Let's have a class. Uh, this is uh, this is the important class because we're gonna talk about the different bacteria media and the inoculate bacteria there and the grow. It's a very important information, and this is the effect sheets chapter nine, and also chapter ten will be a dilution quiz. Chapter ten we'll talk about uh, on next week Tuesday. Okay, because next Tuesday we're gonna do a review. And the following by Thursday, we have a midterm exam. So let's look at your results of your poor plating. So I have a one for example from the students. You can see 10 to the power of 3. It's completed it. You can see it's a mess. Because it's a lot of bacteria, and you, together with uh, melted agar, it cannot be dispersed very well. And then you look at the 10 to the power of 5, looks like also very messy. And you can look, look, look at your own, and then I think it's countable, is you 10 to the power of 7, and you can see some colony are large, some are small, and you basically can, can, can count everything. If really tiny one, you don't have to do. And you can compare your data with your um, spread plating, you can see is there any difference. Okay, so that is up to you guys to do. Uh, I can have another example. This is one of the examples. I have another example right, right here. Let me see. Right. Let me see one more here. So this is the one we can see. 10 to the power of 3. This looks fine, but very messy. You can count. 10 to the power of 5. Big colony, small colony, you can see. But I think this one, 10 to the power of 7, looks good. This is really very typical for the pore plating. It's inserted and on the surface and everywhere. And sometimes in the different location, um, the bacterial growth could be different. Because when you mix it, it's not going to be averagely and evenly. So that happens. OK, that's a good, good, good result. And I'll, I'll take a look at several right here. Yeah, we can take a look at here. This is another example. We can see 10 to the power of 3. It's messy. But it's very distribu evenly distributed. This 10 to the power of 5, you see a lot. And this one looks very good. You see the large one on the surface and the medium one in the middle and some tiny one. And this one definitely is countable. Okay. So, that's a good example for plating. It's much better than... What if you don't have any large ones and you Then you have to count all, the, all those smaller ones. You count all the smaller ones, if it's evenly distributed, you could split them into four parts and multiple by four. Because pore plating is basically is an estimation. You won't get an exact number. The reason why people do that is because it saves one day of the time to make the media. Otherwise, you need to spend another extra day to make the media, let it be dry, cool down, solidify, then you go ahead to do the spread plating. That saves the energy and the time, okay? Okay, today's work, we will talk about four different media. And this is important information uh, directly related to what we talk about in the lecture. So this is a lab, I think it's lab nine, is bacterial media. And this is basically, we focus on the agar, okay? So number one, we have support media. So what is support media? It is support, vegetative cell to grow dramatically. You can say around 10 to the 8 cells per ml. Now it could be the broth, neutron broth. Here what we have is neutron agar. So the example will be neutron agar or tropic soil 
agar, and this one we use a lot in the lab, we call it a TSA acronym. But there is an exception, except fastidious bacteria. So for example, in the classroom, we talk about Haemophilus influenza. This one will not grow on just neutral agar and the tropic soil agar. Because it's a fastidious bacteria. We need X factor, V factor, we talk about, is that right? We need a Staphylococcus aureus already grow on the blood agar. They have a satellite phenomenon. That's very special. Even Neisseria, okay, that's a fastidious bacteria. The second thing, it's very important that we have two agar here. We will introduce to you, and we talked about already, it's a mix of differentiated media. differentiated media and the selective media and selective media okay what is a differentiated media this is biochemical reaction will cause the color change. Color of colony change. Selective media, certain ingredients favor certain bacterial growth. So these are combined. Therefore, we come out with a bac with a bacteria called Macanchiaga. So this is a Macanchiaga. And you look at the Macanchiaga; it is very purple. The first impression, it is purple. I know you won't see, but I'll just write like this, purple. Why? They have crystal violet. And this is crystal violet, a selective ingredient. Why? Crystal violet, when you do gram stain, you see it right here. You see it right here. Same color. Can you see? Same color, because we added it. And the crystal violet will be attacking the peptidoglycan of gram positive bacteria. So once you do a staining, which means it's dead, it's a selective agent. We'll say attacking. Gram positive bacteria, peptidoglycan. So, gram positive bacteria will not grow. This is very important information. Okay? Only gram negative bacteria survive. Well, you can say grow. So that's a very important information. It's a selective media. Second, this is a differentiated media. Why? As I said, Makanki Aga a long time ago, we should, should say it's lactose Makanki. And people think you are very smart. So this is gone. But the ingredients is there. Is the lactose. 
This is dipolysaccharides. Lactose will have two different scenarios. Lactose fermentation positive, lactose fermentation negative. If the bacteria cause lactose fermentation positive, this is pink colony. Why? Because they'll generate low pH, and you have a neutral red as a pH indicator, and it turns pink color. And the lactose fermentation negative, it's basically colorless. That is important, okay? That's why it's a differentiated medium. Okay, we want to introduce another agar for you. Manitol salt agar. And this is a question which is in your practice exam of lecture and also in the real exam. And remember the question we changed a little bit. And this is manitol salt agar. Looks like pink. It is the same as Makanki agar. It's a selective media and a differentiated media. So why we say it's a selective media? Because salt. There is approximately above 3% salt inside. So it will be just 7.5% salt, higher than that. They contain 75% of the salt. And this is, we know the salt could differentiate as halophile and non halophile. Is that correct? So some will grow, some will not grow. And salt is a natural antimicrobial. Not only give you a flavor during food processing, when you add it, it's a natural antimicrobial. Although it's not that effective compared to like sodium diacetate, lactic acid, citric acids, but it's a natural antimicrobial. So selective agent is salt. And another reason we say it lots of times, why staphylococcus will grow on the skin surface, it's a halophile and skin surface will generate some salt. It's also our natural defense system of the body. So that's a salt. Second, what is the differentiated agent? Differentiate is mannitol. Okay, mannitol is a sugar alcohol. You should know that. We'll talk about this. It's a sugar alcohol. That's a mannitol. And the bacteria could use it. So they separate into mannitol fermentation positive and mannitol fermentation negative. If mannitol fermentation positive, the colony is yellow. And mannitol fermentation negative, it is colorless. So the question. Why mannitol fermentation positive, it is yellow? Well, the same thing. We mentioned about the fermentation. We'll talk later on. But fermentation is always will generate the acid. And this means lower pH. And in the inside, we also had a pH indicator, which we call Phenol red. And phenol red, we mentioned later on, it's going to be at the pH 7, it is colorless, at the pH 1 to 2, or in an acid environment, it is yellow color, and at the pH 14 or pH 12, 13, it will be cherry red. So here in the acid environments, 
this being a red is a yellow color. So that's why mannitol salt agar is a selective media. It is also a differentiated media. Last one. We want to talk about the last one. Yes. Blood agar. Okay, blood agar you can see very red. And I bought it, it's a pre-made. So you can see the label at the back. Okay, it's a, you will be very easy to be recognized. And this is TSA Tropic Soil Agar Base. You add 5% sheep blood. And we talk about this already. This is the enrichment media. Why? It can grow bacteria dramatically. And you can see there is a heavy smear there when you do the inoculation. Could grow roughly 10 to the power of 9 cells per ml. But we also mentioned this is a differentiated media. When we say the differentiated media, we will repeat this again and again in our lecture because we have a different alpha hemo a different hemolytic. Alpha hemolytic, a beta hemolytic, and gamma hemolytic. So alpha hemolytic, certainly it is dark green color because it's incomplete complete hemolytic beta hemolytic transparent zone and I hope you will see it as a transparent zone on next week one of them should be and gamma this is nothing happens this is important when we talk about the lecture today we talk about streptococcus staphylococcus it's highly related to this information so you will get <coughs> four agar plates neutral agar selective media makanki agar very purple manito sort agar pink red Everybody will have this set. Two of you will share one blood agar because it is expensive. We will use it twice later on. One for urine sample, another one for throat culture. So we're going to have to save a little bit. So this will be shared. What are today's work? It's very simple. You have Four agar plates, okay. Neutron agar, Makanki agar, Manito salt agar, and blood agar. What are we going to do the first thing? Split them into three chords. you need to label your basic information. Your initial bench number, date, but more important, what are the bacteria we're going to add it? It's different. We will add three different media. We will do E. coli, lactobacillus fermentum, and citrobacter. Uh, let me double check the citrobacter. The right CF there. Okay, citrus bacteria. Same thing here. BC, LF, and CF. We cannot do Staphylococcus aureus. It's a biosafety level 2 passenger. 
Okay? This so is your label. Of course, you're going to have a label everything. Including your basic information. Here, go here, and go here. And this will be a pair. Okay. When you label, what we do? Go from the slums. Using loop to pick bacteria very gentle. Flame the loop. Second, flame the loop. Third. Do each of that. Okay? Little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. This one will be a pair. So little bit, little bit, little bit. Flaming loop between bacteria. Okay, there's a little bit easy way to do. I kind of show you. So this is what we have. But then you're gonna give it to the TA, then you have to organize it. We are gonna incubate 35 degrees Celsius, 48 hours. And we can see the results, okay? Same thing, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Cause I have some students say, you need to show us everything. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. Cause I know it's easy, but I'm gonna show, show you. So, we'll use that bench as an example. It's real quick, but better to show you how to do it. Uh oh. Okay, let's have all these agar plates to put it here, put it here, and then go here. Okay. First thing first, this is coming from the refrigerator. So what you should do? Dry. Okay, it's coming from the refrigerator. I'm only going to show you guys. I'm not going to do this because it's expensive. Otherwise, I need a full blood agar. That's already $5 gun. Okay, this is $1. This is probably like 3 or $5. Inside, I would say, you also do a little bit of drying. Okay. I'll show you an easy way to do it. This is also dry. The last one also has to dry. Okay, then you go by a hazard trash can. Okay, I have to label. Like I said, these three, everybody to individualist. The brother has the two of you share. Okay, one person do. Split them onto three sections. Three section. Three section. And three section. Okay, write your name on the side. 26. CS number one. 26 this is my initial see that's not very good the marker is not looking good okay what are the bacteria we're going to add ec lf cf e coli lactobacillus citrobacter e coli lactobacillus citrobacter e coli lactobacillus citrobacter okay uh, let's do the same order. Okay, when you have this one ready, like that, okay? Needs to be make sure they are in the same order. This is a very easy way to do. Now, what you do? Turn on the bouncing burner. No good, works. Okay, loop, make sure it's straight, flame, okay, flame the loop, very important. Okay, let's do E. coli first. Flame, call down, we're going to pick some bacteria, okay. Okay, what we do? Go here, E. coli is right here, very gentle. 
stick it back here a little bit. Right here. Okay. Very gentle. Take a little bit. Right here. The last one should be good. So, just do it. That's the color. Come on. Flame the loop. You need to know it's in the order. Okay, what's the circle you have? Okay. Black to right there. Flame the loop. Go down. Okay, black to bacillus. So, a little bit. That's, you cannot do flame or you flame. It's up to you. I think it's really light. So, go down. Right here. Okay, recover, blend the loop, we pick a little bit, right here, blend the loop, pick a little bit, right here, okay, done. Now the last one, this has to flame the loop, okay, it's very important. Take some bacteria right there. Don't broke it. I have four more left. Three more left. If you broke it, I don't have anything left. A little bit. It's good. Pick. Go here. A little bit. Flame. Pick. A little bit. Go right here. Then flame. Pick. Okay. okay, that's all. And this is not looking for colony. So keep in mind, this is not called streak plating. You can say it's called spot inoculation. This will be flip it over, give to TA to do the incubation. We will to see whether it grow or not grow on those three agar. Then we know the story behind it, and this we want to see alpha or beta hemolytic or gamma hemolytic. That's the purpose. It's not for isolation single colony. So this is not called streak plating. This is called spot inoculation. Okay, so very good. You can go ahead to do it.